All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're going over 10 gigabit Thunderbolt adapters for computers. This is especially great for laptops or other devices that do not have PCIe cards or do not have any way of having 10 gigabit networking. And we're going over these adapters and which one you should buy. So these are the various adapters I have used throughout the years because none of them are perfect. What these adapters do is they essentially allow your computer to be hooked up to a 10 gigabit switch. So it gives you 10 gigabit networking. And that means when you're transferring files to a NAS, you can push and pull files at 10 gigabit speeds. And that is absolutely awesome. But if you notice, these adapters are huge. The reason they're so big and why this is such a difficult question is 10 gigabit is a power hungry standard. It is quite frankly an inefficient standard that draws way more power to use than most devices. So the reason this thing has a massive heatsink is not because there are large components in here, but rather it draws so much power and creates so much heat that you need a heatsink this big just to cool it off. I have also snuck in here one thing that I love and this right here is not actually a 10 gigabit adapter, so I did lie. It is a 2.5 gigabit adapter, and I recommend this to a lot of people, and we're gonna talk about why in a minute here. Okay, so the adapters we've got right here, one, we've got a little Ugreen 2.5 gigabit dongle. Then we've got this guy, which is the probably the most common 10 gigabit Thunderbolt adapter you'll see. This is the OWC one, this is a version one, you can now get a version two. They're the exact same thing, but the version two has a disconnectable Thunderbolt cable on the back and a rubberized case. Not much different there. I think it's actually the same components inside the hood. So all the performance to talk about here will be applicable. Then we also have this, and actually OWC sent me this a while ago. This is their Thunderbolt Pro Dock, and it has not only a power supply, so this is actually a full-on docking station, but this is one of the only docking stations, one of the only Thunderbolt docking stations that actually has 10 gigabit ethernet built in. So it is great for a docking station. And then finally, the newest one by far is actually the Unify one. And it actually comes in the cheapest. So this one right here, the standard OWC just 10 gigabit dongle is 200 bucks. The Pro Dock is $300, but obviously has a lot more than just an adapter. And then the Unify is $170. There's another difference with this Unify. This Unify adapter is not actually a Thunderbolt adapter. It is actually a USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 adapter. That is just a slight confusion. USB 4 and Thunderbolt are kind of the same thing now that Intel kind of gave up the trademark, but it's not actually that. It's gonna get easier throughout time, but these first two adapters need a Thunderbolt port, whereas Unify just needs a USB-C 4 port. And the reason that these older adapters could not use just standard USB was standard USB did not have enough throughput to saturate the 10 gigabit connection. It was actually a bottleneck. So until USB 4 came along, which has 40 gigabits of throughput, you had to pretty much settle for a Thunderbolt adapter. So especially on some Windows laptops, that was an issue. But with USB 4 now becoming a lot more of a standard, should not be as big of a deal. The 2.5 gigabit adapter I've got right here only requires USB-C, a lot easier. I'm gonna keep talking about how great this thing is because when we're also talking about price, this thing is generally for like 20 bucks. So at one tenth the cost roughly. All right, so if you've seen this channel in the past, you may have heard my stance on these adapters is avoid them. For the longest time, I was recommending people avoid 10 gigabit adapters. There were a lot of issues and that's why if you've seen a lot of my videos, I have often re recommended 2.5 gigabit. And the reason for that is kind of three different things. One, these adapters are huge and just annoying to work with. Because they're so big, if you knock them, they're very subject to get disconnected. The second is that they are really expensive. 20 bucks, 200 bucks. So there's just a huge price difference between them for something that very rarely ever actually comes into play for a lot of people's workflows. 
for a lot of people's workflows, 2.5 gigabit is going to probably saturate what they're doing most of the time. So if you're editing videos, most people will never see a difference between a 2.5 gigabit connection and a 10 gigabit connection. And then finally, number three is the overheating issue that I've seen with both of these adapters. So even with these massive heat sinks on it, I have had issues where if you're running these adapters too hard, they eventually disconnect or have some kind of issue. Basically, you're pulling so much power that these things start to overheat and have issues. And so that's why I have always recommended these 2.5 gigabit adapters for a lot of people, just because they're so much cheaper and easier to work with. I actually got this guy right here, this ProDoc, for the hopes that it actually had a fan. The previous model had a fan, this model does not have a fan. And so this unit is pretty stable, but I have found if my battery is low on my laptop or I'm charging it heavily because I'm using Final Cut Pro and I'm really hitting the NAS heavily at 10 gigabit speeds, I have found this adapter to sometimes disconnect. And actually when Katie was using it as her primary adapter for a very long time, we actually set the speed of this network port. We set it down to 2.5 gigabit instead of 10 gigabit because of that issue. I did find that when I changed the charging port for my laptop to the 15 watt one versus the 85 watt one, it would be enough to let Final Cut Pro run on these M1 Pro chips, really power efficient. And I actually had a lot less disconnects. So this thing is great. And especially if you're not heavily, heavily working, it actually works quite well. But if you're looking for something that is super tanky and you need to be able to charge a, a laptop as well as run Final Cut Pro really heavily and also send a lot of files over the network in interface on here, you may have trouble getting reliable 10 gigabit speeds. And what we actually did to run this business is we actually set that to 2.5 gigabit because when you're editing, you very rarely ever have any need for past 2.5 gigabit speeds. And when we did that, perfectly stable. Other than that, I love this adapter. It's awesome. 85 watts of charging, CF Express Type B, SD card up front, tons of USB ports, tons of charging capability, display port out, things awesome. The only thing I wish is that they had built in a little fan that would kick on and keep that 10 gigabit adapter cool. Now on to the future. So these two devices are probably five years old at least. And especially during COVID, 10 gigabit chips were really hard to come by. So honestly, these things were out of stock for a lot of COVID and really hard to come by just because those chips were hard. Now that we're coming back, we have this guy that Unified just came out with maybe a year ago at this point. And this is Unify's 10 gigabit adapter. They also have a five gigabit version and it is substantially smaller as you can see than the OWC one. And this one actually works really well for me. I have not had really any issues with this adapter yet. I've spent a lot of time testing with it and it runs really well. I have not had any disconnects. I've been able to push all 10 gigabit speeds out of it. And so I found it to be really reliable. It also is nice that it's now USB 4 rather than Thunderbolt 3. And that really just helps with compatibility. It's never been an issue with Macs because Macs have always had Thunderbolt, but especially with Windows laptops, Thunderbolt was sometimes hard to come by because of the Intel licensing. So having it as USB 4 is quite nice. And overall, the thing works out of the box. I've been able to saturate network connections with it and it works really well. I should say all of these adapters and in all honesty, pretty much all adapters you're going to really run into are going to be able to saturate the advertised networking speed. When I do an iPerf with these, I get within 5% of the actual advertised speed. When you include overhead, that's pretty much exactly what you would expect. So this guy, we're gonna be able to get 2.5 gigabit networking out of it. And the rest of these, you're able to get like 9.9 .9 gigabit. So really, really great. And you don't really have any issues there. So overall, I'm no longer really recommending this OWC adapter to people just because UFI 1 is now coming in cheaper and works a lot better. 
I think eventually OWC may create a new version of this with the newer 10 gig chips that are less power hungry, and maybe we just solve all of our issues. 2.5 gigabit is great. Seriously, if you don't need 10 gigabit, check out 2.5 gigabit. It is essentially the same price as one gigabit, and you just have a much smaller, much easier form factor, getting you the majority of the same performance. And finally, this OWC Pro Dock is great, except for that 10 gig networking issue. It is so close to being perfect, and if there was just a fan on there, and we actually did run it at one point where we had a little fan going through it, and it worked totally fine. But basically, this thing, if you've got a little airflow through it, is awesome. It's got the ability to saturate 10 gigabit speeds while also charging your laptop and having DisplayPort out and everything you need, all also charging at 85 watts. It is really great, but without external cooling, it is not reliable enough to really be used in a pro workflow hitting 10 gigabit speeds. But you can't always turn it down 2.5 gigabit and all your issues go away. All right, well, that's gonna be it. I'm not gonna do any iperf tests for this just because I've already done them and they are very boring. They all hit the speed they're going to say they are. But I hope you found this useful. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. Have a good one, bye.